Did you ever know someone that was basically good at every other discipline? You probably felt it growing up. There was a classmate that was good at math, good at sports, good at science, good at everything. And when I was studying to pursue animation, there was always that one kid who was good at character design, good at illustration, good at animation, basically good at everything. Maybe they were also good at things outside of art and animation, like business skills. What you have encountered is someone called a jack of all trades. While there are ways to be a jack of all trades, there are some untold problems being one. Hey guys, it's Sineko Pintoa, and today I'd like to talk about what it is to be a jack of all trades. The general definition of a jack of all trades is someone who can basically do many different types of work and different types of discipline. When it comes to animation production, sometimes people call me a jack of all trades because I can animate, I can character design, I can storyboard, and I can finish a film from scratch to finish. I've worked in these different types of positions. But being a jack of all trades can also extend beyond your main industry. So let's say you're good at coding, you're good at music making, you're good at martial arts, you're good at business. These are other definitions of what is considered to be a jack of all trades. And in this video, I'd like to talk about why it's a good thing to be a jack of all trades, as well as the problems that can come with being a jack of all trades. And then eventually, I'll talk about the ideal things that can happen when you're a jack of all trades, and how to improve other skills that you'd want to improve on. How to be closer to be a multi-talented jack of all trades. So first let's talk about yes, why you should be a jack of all trades. The first one being, you can do everything. Well, a lot of things. You're multi-talented. You can do more than just one skill and you can take on different roles. You can wear many hats. And the more that you're more familiar with a process or a pipeline or a discipline, it builds confidence within you. You have a good idea in how to approach things step by step in different departments. You have more control over every step. You have more power on the execution of each step. You have more power on the decisions you make. And when you have more power to make decisions, the more you're putting more of your personality and yourself into your own work. Let's talk about drawing and drawing art style. You're consciously making decisions of what strokes to make or what kind of aesthetic of drawing you want to carry. Strokes that you don't want to do or drawings that you don't want to do. And it's the same thing when you're handling many different skill sets. You're forced to make decisions for each skill set. So the more skill sets where you're making decisions on, you're also showing more of your voice and your aesthetics and your tastes. So let's talk about animation production because that's what I'm most familiar in. Instead of just focusing on one skill set, you're also putting your sense of timing and editing, your taste of music, your story and character sensibilities, things that you choose to keep, things that you choose to eliminate. This actually helps you stand out even more, makes you more unique. Look at Alberto Mielgo. I think he's a great painter, but he's very well versed in a lot of different things and his stuff really strikes out because that element of different skill sets with video, with animation, with compositing, really makes him and his work stand out. Look at someone like David O'Reilly. He's definitely a bit more experimental, but a lot of his short films do not feel generic. A lot of his projects don't feel generic. They feel uniquely him. His choices in storytelling, sound editing, the pacing, it's all decision choices made by him. A lot of people who are multi-talented or maybe jack of all trades, they have more capability to basically run a studio or their own productions. So if you're familiar with many different processes or the process of making a film, you already know the process so you can start thinking of priority. You can also start thinking about who to hire or maybe figuring out parts which you can do yourself. So that can also mean becoming more independent rather than depending on other people to get something done. Someone who is considered a one-man studio, meaning they can make stuff on their own that's finished from scratch, can also fall into the category of someone who is a jack of all trades. And this will make you more confident over the process and you're involved with every step making decisions. And with your own experience with different expertise, you can basically lead a production and sort of be involved with every step. One of the best things about being a jack of all trades, and this is something that my friend Alan brought up, is being able to change things when you get burned out or bored over one skill set. Let's say you're really tired or burned out from, let's say, animating. You could just paint or illustrate, and maybe you don't want to deal with anything that's drawing or illustration related. Maybe you can delve into music, maybe delve into sound design, maybe coding. 
maybe shoot some video. Maybe make a YouTube channel and make some stupid advice. And you can still be productive in other different fields rather than just the one that you're mostly focused on, for example. Think of it as a nice change of scenery too. And then you can go back to whatever you were doing in the first place, animating, illustrating, whatever it is, and feel more refreshed. So in other words, being a jack of all trades allows you to not get so bored easily with just one skill set. So here's the thing, a lot of people always say, if you're a jack of all trades, everything is good, everything is ready to go, you're Gucci. People will think you're highly desired. But there's also a saying, jack of all trades, master of none. And this whole talk of this statement is kind of controversial. So what this means to me is that you can do many things, but none of those skills may stand out as exceptional. So let's say you're looking for work, right? And a studio says, we're looking for someone who can fill a position that we have in mind. Let's say we're looking for an animator or someone specific. And when you're someone who can basically just do everything, they're still looking for the best possible candidate for a certain position. So let's say they find someone that isn't skilled at everything, but they're exceptionally skilled at, let's say, storyboarding and they're looking for story artists. There's a good possibility that they're just going to pick that person over you. And that's why a lot of schools tend to tell their students to choose a specific discipline for them to focus on. And this also comes with the idea of the portfolio. If you submit a portfolio that just shows everything that you can do, so let's say your portfolio has a mixed bag of character designs and some animation frames here, some layout, just everything, just general stuff, and you submit that for a storyboarding application, it's going to confuse the people looking at that applicant, trying to sort of determine what this individual wants to really do. Especially in studios where they're looking for specific roles for a production. If let's say you're working on a project and you're doing most of the stuff yourself, or maybe you're doing the entire thing yourself, you don't utilize the best of every department. So I'm going to use myself as an example. I can make a film from scratch to finish. I can do very basic sound design. Basically that means just putting sound files on top of each other and playing around with the levels. And I can just make really messy speed paintings for my background. But something I learned is that a crappy sound design can basically kill a project, and people are going to point that out. Same with the background painting, something that I'm not really strong at. I can do it, I can do the basic stuff for it, but if I were to give that to someone who was really skilled at that, they would have done it justice. Now, depending on how experimental you are, or you work in a style that's more indie, maybe that means there's more limited animation, it's more economic, or maybe it's just not mainstream. Sometimes it's hard to get feedback or engagement. Sometimes you just get people saying, yeah, keep doing your own thing, that's amazing. Some people will be into it, some people won't. And in some cases, some people will just see as someone who can do many different steps and will probably just be amazed or impressed that you could do all those steps, not necessarily the project itself. It contrasts something I noticed with people who are more well known for amazing animation skills or amazing illustration skills. There's more engagement for people like that. The best case scenario that I can think of when being a jack of all trades is that as time passes by, you start learning other skills and you start to improve those skills and you use other skills to improve other disciplines and departments. So for example, using 2D animation to get better at your solid draftsmanship for character design. Learning and practicing staging and cinematography will help you get better at painting. And maybe painting can help you get better at your storyboarding compositions. And the more you become more versatile, the more you become a jack of all trades, you start figuring out ways to be more economic, be more cautious of budget, be thoughtful of your work process that can eventually help you come up with faster solutions for processes that might be much longer. And then as you grow in time and experience, maybe you slowly start becoming closer to becoming a master of everything rather than a master of none. You become quite good at multiple disciplines. So you can be an exceptional character designer, an exceptional painter, an exceptional story artist. This in general just opens more job opportunities. People are more trusting of you because of how much more exceptional you are in multiple disciplines. You have more of a say or a voice in these productions. People have confidence in you, including outside of the mainstream industry. So it's also a matter of becoming a jack of all trades, but instead of being a master of none, you're exceptional at a lot of things. And I think that's the jack of all trades that a lot of people want to strive to become. Not just some guy who can wear many hats and perform okay jobs in those different disciplines, but someone who is also exceptionally good at those other disciplines. So how do you become a jack of all trades, where you still have some skills that stand out, and that you're exceptional at some of those skills? 
There really is no secret answer for this, and it's only something that I'm talking about based on my own experiences, and something that sounds honest. So first of all, I would advise you to choose a discipline, like maybe animation or storyboarding or whatever it is, to focus on one, I would say two. And this is for career safety reasons. The first one being that you can get work based on your stronger skills on these disciplines. And the second one being if there's no work for one of your disciplines, you can resort to your other main discipline and see if there's work available for that. Having one or two main disciplines is quite important, especially if you're looking for work. So I would always advise that. So based on my experience working in major studios, you tend to sort of be segregated from many different departments. So it's not really common where you're in a studio and you're doing storyboarding and then all of a sudden you're doing character design and you're doing film editing and then you're doing animation and you're doing all these different trades. Most jobs that are discipline focused don't really do that for you. If you get hired at a major studio doing storyboard work, you're just doing storyboard work. So the first one I'd recommend is start a side project or a personal project where you do actually have to wear many different hats. So let's say my skills are storyboarding and animation and I make sort of a short film using storyboarding and animation as my main skills for that project, but I'll have to produce backgrounds. So I'm forced to actually do things like painting and eventually that experience will help me get better at painting in general. Maybe you're a concept artist and you want to get better at sequential drawing. Maybe start a graphic novel where you have to deal with sequential images. And from that, you're going to have to draw many different poses. You're going to have to draw acting. You're going to have to draw expressions. And if you're making a graphic novel with your own story, you're going to have to write it. You're going to have to write a script. You're going to have to write dialogue. And therefore, by doing that, you're slowly getting more adapted into improving your writing skills. So let's talk about beyond my main interests, which is animation. One of my favorite side hobbies is grappling and wrestling. And to get a better understanding of body positions and combinations for submissions, I use my main skill to actually get a better understanding of the small details that happen in a scramble. So when I actually go wrestle and grapple next time, those small animation studies allows me to think more about what I could do to replicate that movement. Again, you could use your main skill as a tool to learn another skill. And that's why I always talk about side projects and personal projects. It's a learning experience. And you get to learn things that you never really do in your main job or your main discipline. Some people like to come up with an excuse of like they don't know how to paint and they need to learn how to paint before they do any project that requires them to paint. But you know, doing a project is also another way of learning, which people tend to forget a lot. I would also encourage doing projects that kind of force you to learn a new software, maybe new tools and different approaches. So when I wanted to do a test with Grease Pencil, I had to learn a bit of Blender and I learned it while working on a project or an assignment. Now I feel a bit more confident and more comfortable in implementing more CG and 3D stuff in my work. If you're the type of person who needs an environment or a community where you're kind of forced to learn something, maybe sign up for a class. Maybe sign up for like a drawing class or a painting class. And just getting that feedback and being in that environment of community will help you get better in that craft or in that discipline. Being a business savvy person is also a trade to learn. Learning about money, learning about marketing. One of my friends got really good at drawing hands, like amazingly good. And what he did was that he just surrendered an entire week or two just drawing hands and nothing else. I'm not sure if I personally would go that far, but I'm just throwing it out there in case you want to try it yourself. So my opinion, should you strive to be a jack of all trades or multi-talented? Yeah, absolutely. If we learn many different skill sets, it's going to expand our view on life for sure. Instead of being tunnel visioned by just one single skill set or just in our own little world. But with that said, I also think it's good to have one or two skill sets that you're really strong at and really build that skill set up so you can find work with that skill set. And then you can participate in projects where you're mainly using those skill sets while having to also delve into other disciplines and skill sets to get something done. There's a lot of talented people in this industry, some being animators, some being character designers, some being story artists, yet a lot of them don't really know how to make an animated short film. Or a lot of people are so tunnel vision that they refuse to learn other things. 
I personally think someone who is a jack of all trades. So let's say a jack of all trades that's not necessarily good at everything, just wears many hats. I can see them having more potential to grow rather than the people who are good at what they do but only focus on that and refuse to learn anything new. So those are my thoughts on slowly becoming more of a jack of all trades, becoming multidisciplined, if you want to become more independent, if you want to have more of your voice in different disciplines. I think being versatile in a lot of different things is a good way to go and it's great for human growth too rather than just sticking to one discipline and just flourishing that only. You want to love the industry or craft that you do even more, and that also means changing things up, being open to keep learning new things outside of your comfort zone, forcing your, putting yourself in new circumstances that forces you to learn new things. Okay, uh, that's pretty much it. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.